Greetings, Marines. It's another glorious day in the Corps where every meal is a banquet, every formation a parade, and every rule book riddled with more holes than a fine Swiss cheese. I'm Steve Tassie, the board game guy, here to provide you with a bug hunting boot camp. Aliens, Another Glorious Day in the Corps is a cooperative game that recreates the survival mission of the Colonial Marines from James Cameron's classic action film, Aliens. It has a campaign mode that takes you through a series of main missions and side quests, and it has several bug hunt scenarios that allow you to play in survival mode. There are already a number of expansion sets released, but this video will assume that you are just playing with the base game and it will guide you through playing the first campaign mission, Newt. You don't have to be sorry. It wasn't your fault. Let me start by assuring you that you aren't going mad. The rule book sucks. It has many glaring omissions. There are rules that are only mentioned on the back panel turn sequence guide or other strange places that you aren't expecting to find them. And there are mistakes on cards that lead people to playing the game wrong. The publisher's website has a long fact for the game. And there are roughly 200 rules question threads for the game's entry on Board Game Geek. So it's pretty obvious the rulebook for the game is inadequate. And that's why you're here. So let's get going. I'm going to assume that you have either followed the setup instructions that come with the game, or you've watched Aliens Another Glorious Day in the Core Tutorial Part 1 Components and Setup. All right, I want combat seating. You know your places. As you can see, the Newt mission is set up and ready to go. Thanks again to Moyle's Meticulous Miniatures for the stellar paint job on my game pieces. Hi, I'm Scott, and at Moyle's Meticulous Miniatures, I paint toy soldiers, including all of the minis that Steve is using to teach aliens another glorious day in the core. You can see me paint miniatures live on my Twitch. Give me a follow there and you'll get notified when I'm going live next. And you can see what I've been up to lately on my Facebook or my Instagram. I really enjoy helping other painters. So if you ever have a question, whether you're just getting started in the hobby or you've been painting for a long time, feel free to ask. When I'm live on Twitch, I can often grab something off my desk and show you right then and there with a quick tutorial how to get the results you want on your miniatures. I'm also available for commissions, so if you'd like your miniatures to look even cooler, feel free to get in touch. Everybody knows that painted miniatures roll better. That's just science. Back to you, Steve. Good luck with the xenomorphs. Before I explain the turn-by-turn -turn game play, there are a few concepts that you need to know to understand the game. Line of Sight. Line of Sight is an important concept for spotting aliens and attacking them. Until you've spotted an alien or alien swarm, it moves around the board in the form of an unidentified blip. When you or the blip moves, causing the blip to enter your line of sight, it gets revealed and you find out if it's a single drone or a swarm of two to five of them. In order to attack an alien, you must have it in your line of sight. Doors block line of sight if they're closed or barricaded. Uh, unless they're barricaded, doors automatically open when anyone or anything is adjacent to them. Hero, grunt, alien, swarm, or blip. Walls also block line of sight. If any point on your character's space can trace a straight line to any point on the target space without going through a wall, a closed door, or a friendly character, you have line of sight on that space. The following line of sight edge case is never actually mentioned in the rules, but I've discussed it with the designers and have learned that it works like so. If two friendly units share a corner, but not an edge of their adjacent spaces, another friendly unit cannot trace line of sight between those corners to an alien enemy that is in the distance. However, 
if that alien enemy is occupying the space that is adjacent to both the friendly units that share a corner, then our attacking character can trace line of sight and target that alien. Gameplay. The game is divided into rounds and it ends when the Marines achieve their final mission objective or when the Marines are all dead or out of cards. The game's also over if all the Marines have been either captured or knocked down. A round is divided into three phases, the Marine phase, the Alien phase, and the Finish phase. During the Marine phase, the heroes and grunts get to activate, moving, playing cards, greasing xenomorphs, etc. In the Alien phase, the aliens move and attack, the blips move and potentially attack, and more blips show up. In the Finish phase, you check for victory and prepare for the next round, Marine phase. Start the Marine phase by determining the activation order of the players. The player with the highest ranking character takes the Bug Stomper activation token and assigns it to themselves or any other player that they want. That player is now activated. When they are finished all the steps of their turn, they pass the Bug Stomper activation token one player to the left, and now that player activates and so on until every player has activated. Each player goes through a series of steps once they receive the Bug Stomper token. Step one is to reset their aim dial to their base aim number. If their character's aim was depleted from firing, you turn it up, but if they aimed in the last round but didn't end up fighting, you turn it down. Step two is to resolve all on activation abilities. It might be a hero ability, it might come from a piece of gear, or perhaps a hazard card that is on that character. Whatever the source, resolve it now. The player gets to choose which order to resolve them in if they have multiple on activation abilities in effect. Step three is to equip or unequip cards. The player may equip any weapon or equipment card from their hand to their character, or potentially another character, with certain limitations. Each character has room for one primary weapon, one backup weapon, and up to two pieces of equipment. If a character is full, you cannot equip any new cards to them. You may unequip cards from your own character and return them to your hand, thus allowing you to equip a new card from your hand. You may only equip cards to another character if they are within two spaces of your character. If the weapon or equipment card that you are equipping has a cost printed on it, you must pay that cost by moving the proper number of cards from the endurance deck to the top of the exhaustion pile. Step four is actions. You get to perform up to two of them. There are several available action options you can take and you may perform the same one twice if you want. You do not have to use both your available actions if you don't want to, but unused actions are lost. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Move. You move your figure up to a number of spaces equal to your speed. You may move diagonally or orthogonally. You cannot move diagonally through the edge of a doorway, though. You can move through friendly units, but cannot stop on an occupied space. You cannot move through a space with an alien or uh, alien swarm tokens. You must stop immediately if you move into a space that is next to an alien or a blip. If a character moves in such a way that it gains line of sight on a blip, that blip is spotted. You flip the blip over and replace it with an alien figure and enough tokens to match the number on the blip. So a one blip is just an alien figure, while a four blip would get an alien figure plus three alien tokens. Revealed blips are then placed back into the blip pool face down. Attack. If you have a weapon equipped, you may use it to attack any alien figure or token that you have line of sight on. Some weapons, like flamethrowers or grenades, target one or more spaces, and you roll attacks against anything in or adjacent to those spaces. To make an attack, declare your weapon and your target and roll a marine die. That's the 10-sided die. If the roll is equal or lower than your character's current aim number, you have scored a kill. Remove the target alien, or if you're attacking a swarm, remove one of the alien tokens from the swarm. After determining success or failure of the attack, reduce your aim one notch on your aim dial. Most weapons have a cost to use them. This is different from the cost to equip them. This must be paid each time you use the attack action with the weapon. However, 
If it's a grenade or flamethrower that can target several figures at once, you don't pay the cost for each roll you're making, just once per action that you spend. Some weapons have the keyword full auto, which means that if you score a hit, you may exhaust another card from the top of the endurance deck in order to make another attack roll. This can be to continue the attack against the same swarm, or you can switch to a new alien target. Full auto fire ends as soon as you either miss what you're shooting at or choose to stop firing. It also automatically ends if you cannot exhaust any more cards. Some weapons have rules modifications printed right on their cards. With the smart gun, for example, you roll both marine dice when attacking and take the result you like best. Read your weapon cards. Barricade is the action you want to take if you want to either barricade or unbarricade a door, tunnel, or spawn point. You must be adjacent to the item in question and make a tech roll. Roll a marine die, and if it is equal to or lower than your tech number, you are successful. Barricades on spaces prevent aliens and blips from moving through them, and they prevent new blips from spawning on them. Unless, of course, the alien or blip in question rolls a four or higher on the alien die. That's the standard six-sided die. Barricades are your friend. If an alien or blip rolls four plus against a barricade, the barricade is destroyed and it's removed from the board. The aim action allows you to increase your aim dial by one notch. Increased aim lasts until the beginning of that character's next activation. Interact is a mission-specific action that will have different rules based on the mission you are playing. Supply chests, computer terminals, and other objects can be interacted with according to the mission specs. To do so, you must be adjacent to the corresponding space and then follow the rules of that mission. For example, in the mission Newt, you can interact with the computer terminal by making a tech roll. If the roll succeeds, you may look at a single face-down blip token. When you first encounter Newt, she's feral and panicking, so you need to interact with her and roll a four or lower on a marine die in order to calm her down and get her to join your team. Card action is the action to take if a character has an equipped card that grants an action ability. For example, the blowtorch can be discarded to create a barricade with no tech roll required. And the med scanner lets you stand up a knocked down character. Rest is the action to take if you want to draw and or recycle cards. A hero who rests may draw up to two cards from the top of the endurance deck and then may recycle up to three cards from either their hand or from the exhaustion pile. When Newt rests, she may recycle an extra card. Grunts can rest, but they can't draw cards because they have no hands, so they can only recycle cards from the exhaustion pile. Step five of your turn happens after your character has taken all the actions you want them to. In step five, you resolve any end of activation effects. Like on activation effects, you resolve them in the order of your choosing if you have multiple ones that need resolving. Step six is grunt activation. If there are grunts that have not yet been activated by another player this round, you get to activate a number of grunts equal to your rank either one, two, or three. If you're playing a civilian character, you do not get to activate any grunts. Grunts have no hand of cards, so they cannot equip cards or play cards, but they do all the other aspects of a marine turn. After finishing your grunt activation step, the last thing you do is pass the bug stomper activation token to the next player in line. If you were the last player to activate, give the bug stomper back to the highest ranking player and the group will decide how to activate any grunts that are left over that haven't been activated yet this round. The rules do not include a way to mark that a grunt has been activated, but what I like to do is put the grunt's aim dial over their face on their character card to show that they're unavailable for future activations this round. For Newt, who doesn't have an aim dial, place a different component like the round dial or her mission blip over her face to indicate that you've activated her. Once all the players have completed their activations and all the remaining grunts have been activated, it is time to start the alien phase. In step one of the alien phase, all the alien figures and alien swarms activate. In step two, all the blips on the board activate. And in step three, players will draw and resolve motion tracker cards to add new blips to the board. Activating aliens. Each alien figure on the board activates in turn, completing their 
full activation before you move on to the next one. Start with the alien or alien swarm that is closest to a character. If multiple aliens are equidistant from a character or characters, the player with the highest ranking hero will decide the activation order. The first thing an alien does is move, unless it's already adjacent to a character. Aliens have a speed of six and they will move towards the nearest character. If there's a tie, again, the highest ranking player breaks the tie. They stop moving when they have moved all six spaces, moved onto a space that is adjacent to a character, or they've run against a barricade and failed to break through it. When an alien moves adjacent to a character, it is now in attack position. Before it gets to attack, however, the target character and any other characters within four spaces who have line of sight on the alien get to take defensive fire against that alien. Starting with the character closest to the alien and moving outward, each character who can makes a standard attack against the alien. Remember to exhaust the proper number of cards for the weapon you're using and reduce your character's aim dial for that defensive fire. Also remember that cumbersome weapons cannot be used for defensive fire, so the flamethrower is not eligible. Expansions may include other cumbersome weapons, but for now, the flamethrower is the only one in the base game. If, after all the defensive fire is done, the alien is still standing, it attacks the target. The player checks the defense number of the target character and rolls a marine die. If the roll is equal to or lower than the defense number, the defense is successful and the character has dodged the alien's attack. When being attacked by a swarm of aliens, each token in the stack adds plus one to the character's defense roll, making it harder to succeed. If the defense roll is also equal to or lower than the character's melee score, the character has successfully counterattacked and removes one token or figure from the attacking space. If the defense roll is a 10 or higher, remember swarms add to your defense roll, making this outcome more likely when you're facing large swarms. The character has been killed and removed from the board. All cards in the player's hand and equipped on the dead character are discarded. That character is gone for the rest of the campaign. Dead is dead. If a character who fails their defense roll has either a helmet or body armor, they may use that equipment to possibly protect themselves, but each piece of equipment can only be used once per failed defense roll. If the defense roll is a failure but not 10 plus, the character is knocked down. Knocked down characters cannot take any actions on the marine phase and will stand up at the start of the next alien phase only if there are no alien figures adjacent to them at the start of the alien phase. While a knockdown character can't take actions, there's nothing in the rules preventing the character from doing the rest of the elements of their turn. So if they have any on activation, end of activation, or passive abilities that are not actions, they may still use those. However, if the next alien phase starts and there are any alien figures next to the knockdown character, that character has been captured. It is removed from the board and is out of the game for the rest of the mission. The player discards all the cards they had in their hand, as well as any that were equipped to the character. All alien figures and tokens that were next to the captured character are also removed from the board. So, at least that's something. If a player loses their hero to the aliens, either being captured or killed, they pick a grunt to flip over uh, to their hero side and they continue playing as that new character. A captured character cannot be used in any more missions, either as a hero or as a grunt, until the players play the rescue mission scenario to get them back. The blips. After all the alien figures and swarms have activated, it's time to do the same with blips. The blips are alien hostile contacts of varying sizes. Some of them are single drones, while most represent swarms of two to five xenomorphs. One of the newt specific uh, mission blips is a false alarm and has no aliens on it, but all other blips are actual threats. The four mission blips do not move. That's important to know. Those ones do not move. Only standard blips move. To activate the blips, pick one of the four game boards and activate all the blips on that board. Then once you've done that, move on to another board, activate those blips, and so on until all the blips in play have been activated. 
If you move a blip from one board to a different board that hasn't yet been activated, don't move that said blip a second time. It's already been activated. To activate blips, roll the alien die. The number you get is the speed of all of the blips on that one board. Aside from the variable speed, blips move the same way as aliens do. Start with the blip closest to a character and resolve them one at a time. A blip stops moving when it runs out of movement, moves adjacent to a character, or fails to break through a barricade. If a blip moves into a character's line of sight, pause its movement long enough to spot that blip, so reveal the number on the reverse side, and place the corresponding number of figures and or tokens on the space. The new alien figure and any tokens under it then complete the movement with whatever movement allowance that blip had left. Revealed blips are placed back in the blip pool face down. Any newly placed aliens that are now in attack position trigger defensive fire from the characters and then attack just like the aliens did during the activate alien step. Step three adds more blips to the map. Each player is going to draw and resolve one motion tracker card. If you're only playing with one or two players, then you will each draw two motion tracker cards every round. Note, in the Newt mission, you do not draw any motion tracker cards until this phase in round three. So round one and round two, the motion tracker phase are freebies. You don't have to add anything new to the board. Motion tracker cards have a number of blips on them as well as the spawn point where those blips appear. And some of them will also have game effects that need to be resolved when those blips are added to the board. No more than one blip can be on a space. So if multiple blips appear at the same spawn point, place one on the spawn point and place the others as close to that spawn point as you can. Blips are drawn randomly from the blip pool to satisfy the movement tracker cards. If a new blip spawns immediately in a character's line of sight, it is spotted right away and replaced with a figure and any needed tokens. If a blip is to appear on a barricaded spawn point, roll the alien die. On a one, two, or a three result, discard the blip back into the pool. It didn't appear. On a four or higher, however, remove the barricade and place the blip. If multiple blips appear on the same barricaded spawn point, roll for each one until you've either rolled for all the blips or the barricade has been destroyed. If you're in a situation where the motion tracker card tells you to place more blips on the board than there are remaining in the blip pool, well, place as many as you can and then move all of the blips that are on the board three spaces according to the normal blip movement. Yes, that does mean the blips that have already moved this round will move again. The designer has clarified that if a motion tracker card causes a blip to appear adjacent to and in line of sight of a character, the blip is spotted but does not get to attack at this time. That's a little bit of luck for the Marines on that one. After all the new blips are placed and any new effects from the motion tracker cards are resolved, we move on to the finish phase. In step one of the finish phase, resolve any finish phase effects on cards that are in play. In step two, check to see if any of the end conditions have been met with either a marine victory or everyone's dead or captured and a marine loss. Step three is to clean up. Move the turn dial up one, if the current mission is using the turn dial, and then move on to the new round starting with the marine phase. The Newt mission only uses the turn dial for the first three turns to tell when you finally start revealing motion tracker cards. After that, you can ignore the turn dial for this mission. Newt. The first mission is to find Newt and get everyone to the exit space. Newt is one of the four mission blips placed on the bottom left board at the start of the mission. It will likely take you a few turns to actually locate her. Once she's been found, there are a few rules that kick in. Place the Newt figure on the board where the, her blip was. She is not part of the squad yet, not until someone manages to get near her and calm her down. Ripley is the best person for that job, as Newt is programmed to run away from Marines. The scared Newt movement rules are confusing as presented in the mission rules. While she is scared, she spends both of her actions moving and must end her movement as far away from any Marine figures as possible for her to do. Remember that Ripley is a civilian 
So are Burke and Bishop, if you're using expansion content. So Newt will ignore her, or them, as for calculating far as possible for Marines. She is allowed to move through a Marine occupied space, if doing so will allow her to end up farther away from any Marines than not moving through that space would allow her to be. The rules as written and as discussed on Board Game Geek rules threads do not prevent Newt from moving near to or ending her move near blips or aliens, just Marines. This is weird, I know, but I cannot find anything in the rules, the official fact, or the BGG threads that corrects this anomaly. So until I do, that is the rule. One could make the argument that her fear of the Marines prevents her from noticing the well-hidden aliens that she winds up running towards. Sure, we'll go with that. To calm Newt down, any character who is within two spaces of and has line of sight to Newt must make an interact action. If they roll four or less on the Marine die, she has calmed down. Five or higher, and she hasn't, she's still panicking. Once she's been calmed down, Newt joins the squad as a regular grunt. If, however, Ripley is being used as a hero character, then Newt is also used as a hero. Grunt Newt does not have any special abilities, but the hero version of Newt does. Firstly, when Hero Newt takes the rest action, you get to recycle an additional card from the exhaustion pile. The second Hero Newt ability contains a mistake. It is not a mandatory ability as it appears based on the text on her card. It should contain the word May. Gale Force 9 overlooked that little word. So, as an end of activation ability, Newt may exhaust two cards to move a character that is within her line of sight two spaces closer to herself. As I've explained earlier, this ability cannot be used to move a knocked down character. Campaign mode. Each of the missions can be played as a standalone mission or you can try the campaign mode. Losses carry over from mission to mission in the campaign mode. So if a character dies in mission one, they cannot be used in missions two or three. If a character is captured by aliens, you can do a side mission in order to rescue them. You can also do one supply mission per campaign in order to reclaim lost cards for your endurance deck. A very successful campaign will be three missions long. Newt, Escape, followed by Survive. If things go poorly, though, a campaign could be five or even more missions, depending on how many rescue missions you decide you need to do in order for reclaiming missing characters. If a mission is lost, the campaign is over, because that means everyone's dead. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. After a mission is won, each player gets to go through the discard pile and return one card of their choice to the Endurance deck for future missions. Then. All of the hazards are returned to the Endurance deck, shuffle the remaining discarded cards, and randomly select half of them, round up, to be removed from the game permanently. The remaining cards get shuffled back into the Endurance deck. At the start of the next mission, you have the choice of having each character keep the same equipped cards and cards in hand as they ended the last mission with, or each character can be geared up for free from whatever weapons and equipment cards are still in your endurance deck. If you play a bug hunt scenario, so that's outside of the campaign missions, characters start with a pistol and no other equipment. The subsequent missions introduce other elements of the game, such as face huggers, supply crates, and sentry guns. Those elements are beyond the scope of this video. You now know what you need to know in order to play the Newt mission. So. I hope you enjoyed the game. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Good luck, Marines. You're gonna need it. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over.